Hello and welcome to this fifth tutorial video on how to make an unjointed memory bear. We've sewn together all the parts of our bear and now we're going to stuff him. The unjointed memory bear has just one opening in the back and all of your stuffing is going to go in through that opening. Choose your stuffing carefully. You want something that's definitely fire retardant, especially if you're giving this to a child. I'm not going to add any weighting like plastic pellets so I'm just going to start by adding a little bit of the stuffing to the bottom of each extremity. So a little bit into each foot to start off with. If you are going to add any weighting like plastic pellets, it's a good idea to add them to a little bag. You can make that either from the foot of an old pair of tights that you've filled with a little bit of plastic pellets and then tied shut with a bit of thread. And when you add that to the bottom, of the bear to give him a bit of weight in his tummy you can actually stitch it into position so that all of the plastic pellets don't fall down to the bottom of the feet. I'm adding to the extremities of the arms now so to the bottom of the paws a little bit and one of the reasons I've gone with this nice open fluffy stuffing is that you don't have to add too much weight this is a very stretchy fabric that this memory bear is made from and it would be very easy to overstuff and to make him hard and lumpy. So this nice fluffy open polyfiber makes him nice and squidgy. That's a technical term, squidgy. Now adding some to the top of the head and then very importantly to the nose. Now that really does need a, a good push for that polyfiber to go right to the end so that it's quite nice and firm here at the end of the nose because when we add the stitched nose we don't want that to crumple up. It's not going to be anything like as firm as your hard filled bears like the the button jointed bear that we did with um, a quite heavyweight cotton. That was a very stiff and very hard stuffed bear as it are the mohair bears. This is much softer but you still need to make sure you get that right into the end of the nose. Check the shape, make sure it's nice and even. Still need some stuffing here in the back of the head. So there's more to go in there. It's about 250 grams in total. And that's about nine ounces, I think. So make sure it's evenly spread out and there aren't any empty bits. I'm not going to be doing this to the kind of standard that I would do if it was a finished bear because it takes a bit of time to make sure it's nice and evenly spread out and I do want to show you all of the process. So just a bit into the tummy here and then I'm going to go down into the bottom of the legs so we can see we're evenly spreading it out. Nice squishy bottom down into the legs now. And the top where they kind of lift up above the jointing area, you want to make sure that's stuffed too. He definitely needs more down in the legs and in his shoulders. He's going to need quite a bit in his shoulders yet. So take much more time than I am when you're doing this. There we go. A bit more in his tummy. Starting to get a nice shape, but definitely up here needs a bit more. Go. So get that nice, still floppy, nice and squishy, but a nice filled out shape. Now take a bit more time than I am here. And when that's completely done, you're going to sew him shut. And we do that at this back portion here, just using ladder stitch. Now I will add a tutorial for ladder stitch and you close that up there. Now we're going to add the eyes to our bear and I'm using these bobble head pins just to choose the positioning. You've got quite a nice curve there where the muzzle joins the forehead so that's a nice natural point to start with. So I've put my bobble head pins in. These, this pattern has got stripes across it, this fabric, so it's quite a nice uh, easy one to position with but we'll turn it upside down and the brain plays a bit of a trick with us when we see things the right way up and it makes them look level. 
If you turn the bear upside down, you get a better idea. And if you're happy with the positioning on those eyes, I'm actually going to pull that bobble head pin out a bit, go in a little bit lower down with my needle, with my black embroidery thread or cotton pearl attached. I'm going to come out at the position that I'd marked with my bobble head pin, lose the end of my thread in there, getting a bit of a knot, and then I'm going to just a little bit of sort of satin stitch, just a few stitches, starting off with a knot to secure it, and then just make a few stitches. I'm going over the seam. And it doesn't need to be too big. I'm trying to make a slightly kind of round shape by making my middle stitches a bit bigger. And then as I go out, make them slightly smaller. Just a few stitches like that. Just to give the positioning for the eye. And then I'm going to go over the other way. Just to make it a little denser. Make sure there are no gaps between the stitches. looking okay. Right, so I'm coming back to the other side. It's quite a nice shape and then I'm going to make a little stitch Go back through there and tie, oops, drop my needle, back through the little loop and tie another knot. And then I'm going to go back through down to lower and pull that thread through, pull it a little bit tight and snip off close to the fabric, be careful not to cut your fabric, and the end would disappear inside. And there's one eye. Now you're going to repeat that on the other side until you've got your two eyes. Now this is my the same cotton pearl but with a long doll needle this time and this is to sculpt so I'm going in at the, the base of the chin there and I'm going to come out it looks terribly brutal but really don't <laughs> don't worry they can't feel a thing at this point. I'm going to come out through the eye leaving the end of my cotton pearl hanging under the chin like that and I'm going to go back in just a, a few millimeters away on the eye. It does look terribly brutal I know. Oh sorry bear. And then we're going to come out through the other eye. This will pull the, the face in and give it some shape. That's out through the second eye. That's disappeared. We've made that nice and flat in there. And now we're going to bring again a few millimetres apart from where we've come out. Really do have to poke this through the threads and then come out a few millimetres away from that first stitch where that went in. I've gone either side of that seam on the chin insert pull that out and you'll see how this shapes the face. 
So when I get my two ends of thread and pull them, it pulls the eyes in and it starts to give us some muzzle. So you need to pull that in. I've got a little bit sticking up there. I might have to tuck it in. You pull that in and that gives us a nice sculpted face shape. There we go. And I'm going to tie a knot here. And I'm actually going to wrap this thread around a few times. That stops it slipping when I pull it tight. So I can kind of tug in one side and then if I need to I can tug in the other side until I'm happy that it's level. I am going to have to go back and that little bit that's sticking up there is annoying me but I can go back and deal with that. Right, so now I'm tying a knot. There we go. And I'm going to lose the ends inside the head. I'm happy with that. So just pass the needle back in through the same position as close as you can to your knot and just out on the other side of the bear pull it tight and then snip and that end will disappear inside and I'll do the same with the other thread into the needle there we go and then again backing close to that knot all the way through the bear pull it nice and tight and snip that's his eyes done lovely and I'm just going to use the flat end of my needle to poke in that bit of thread that was annoying me on the eye we're going to do his nose now I'm using three bobble head pins to make the shape that I want for my bear's nose now it will it will kind of pull in a little so go go a bit bigger than you think you're going to need and then use a piece of your black thread or whatever colour you're using, of course it doesn't have to be black. Wrap it around the bottom and then the top two pins. And you'll start to get an idea of the shape of the nose and you can see how that looks. Now, as I say, it's going to come out smaller than this on a soft filled bear like this. So give him a little extra nose. And then when you're happy with that shape, we're going to start to add the nose. So long doll needle with your embroidery thread goes in through the base of the chin again and up to a point in between these top two pins it's quite clearly marked on my bear by this line that goes across so there and we're going to let the thread just disappear inside and then we're going to mark the long point that goes through his nose down to the bottom of the first middle stitch so that's where the bottom of his mouth is going to be the middle of his mouth and then I'm going to go up at an angle to the first top pin and I'm going to come out there now I'm going to go down at an angle to just the other side of this thread where I've marked it with a pin and I'm going to go in there and then it's all angles now. I'm going to go up to the second top pin, to that position there. And come out and then down again to make this sort of triangular shape at the bottom of his nose. Now this is going to look really bitty at this point because we've got to build this nose up a bit. So now I'm going right in between the two. The 
angled stitch at the side and the center stitch so I'm going up in the middle there and bringing it down to that point where the two angled stitches that make the nose meet up in between the middle stitch and the far side on the other side of his nose so I'm kind of keep filling in the gaps in between wherever you've got a stitch go in between and keep filling it in and as I say this looks very bitty at this point and you can see how that nose is crumpling up a bit so we've got to build that up with lots of stitches like this keep filling it in until it looks like this as you can see that's quite a lot bigger and built up now I'm going to do one stitch going right the way across the top which will help to neaten that top line and I'm going to come out at the point that will be the outside of his mouth and we'll use the same idea of bobblehead pins to give us an idea of the shape there how far out we want them to come it's just one stitch either side so it's it doesn't have to be bigger than it would be so pull that out a little way go right down to the outside of the mouth it's lower than the bottom of our center stitch so we are lower than the bottom of our center stitch there we go that's a nice neat line across the top tuck it under this central stitch through the middle of there without catching the fabric And then we're going to go down to that outside stitch. Quite happy with that. Make sure it's the same length. So there's that bottom of that outside stitch marked with a pin. And I'm going in and then back down to the base of the chin. Pull my thread through. And there's his mouth. Just give it a little curve to give him a smile. And I'm just going to give it a little stitch just to secure it. Because I don't want, if we've got a little one, I don't want them pulling at that thread. So there we go, that's pulled through. I'm going to knot and then take the needle all the way through again pull it nice and tight and snip there you go and that's his smile done perfect and just to show you how different these bears can be in different fabrics the one on the left we made with our baby grow the one on the right, a pair of baby jeans and a t-shirt with the detailing from the jeans just to make it extra special. There you go. That concludes our tutorial video. I hope it's been helpful. If it has, please subscribe. We'd love your feedback and a like. There are more videos coming soon.